Amen. The Lord is gracious. He is kind. He's compassionate. He is actively creative. And we but right now to give him thanks, to give him praise, to give him reverence. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. Lift up your hands in your sanctuary if you were born of the Spirit and bless the Lord. He is so excited. God is a God who is not an emotionless God. He feels what we feel. He's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And through all of this, he's actively, hallelujah, pulling on his completed work because God created and he rested my God and everything in him is yes and amen so we can honor God we can praise him we can we can give him glory come on come on let's take a few minutes and let me see you put some praise in whatever on whatever platform you are on my God those here with us just bless the Lord you're driving down the highway or you're even watching this series because it is a series we have been looking at strategic prayers for a whole month and then we looked at strategic prayer for mothers and my god during that series the lord just popped my eye my spiritual eyes open concerning his plans for mothers and how he sees motherhood it was my god and now he's looking at strategic prayer for families Lord, may the word, the words that you have put in my mouth and the meditation that is now on my heart go out across various platforms and go out to those who are right here with us. And may you be glorified. We give you praise. We honor you. We magnify you. You are God alone. You are the God. You are the strength of our lives. We honor you. You are the God of all gods. You are the Lord of all lords, the King of all kings. You are. You are. You are. You are. No wonder you said, I am that I am, because you would be to us what we need you to be in every single phase of our lives. And so we just thank you, my Lord. We're looking at strategic prayer for families. And as you would see, this is... Um, the sixth in the series, you can find the others on our YouTube ch channel and allow God to speak to your heart concerning strategic prayer. And, and we, we, have, we have looked at the fact that strategic prayers are prayers that are prayed according to the will and purpose of God. And um, he is the one who stirs these prayers. He's the one who um, unctionizes us to pray these prayers. And he's the one who answers these prayers and he takes these prayers and according to the book of revelation he, he, he puts them in a, in a in a golden bowl in heaven and he mixes them with incense and send them back to the earth my god god has chosen to use the technology of prayer to um engage us to co-labor with him to effect his eternal purpose we ought to praise god for that we ought to just lift up our hands and magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. My Lord, family is God's amazing idea. Both natural family and spiritual family. And we see in the book of Genesis where God created Adam and Eve. My God, he created the man first and then he, 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 he saw that it was not good for the man to be alone. And so he put the man to sleep and took a rib from the man and formed a woman. And in his own time, he gave them children. So he, God determined that family should be mother, father, and children. The natural family should be mother, father, and children. But family is God's amazing idea. We see where God has my lord a spiritual family that includes those of us who are born again and he alludes to this spiritual family in the book of ephesians 3 verse 14 to 16. let me tell you all truth is parallel and what god what you see in the natural is a reflection of that which is in the spiritual 
It all begins with God first, and then he manifests what is his reality in the natural. And so family is his amazing idea. And um, he, he, he designed an, a spiritual family from before time. But that did not cancel his plan for natural families. Because we see in Ephesians 3 verse 14 to 16. And for this cause I bow my knees. And this is Paul the Apostle speaking. Unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. And this is the chapter that speaks about the riches that we have in Christ. And I'm not going to go into all of that. But it starts with that he would grant you according to his riches. Hallelujah. To be strengthened with might in the inner man. So we can see here that, that God has an eternal family. Right? And he calls us. He actually calls those who are born again. He says we are of the household of God. God is a father, y'all. He is a spiritual father. And guess what? He is father of all creation. So everybody who is in the earth, God is their father by way of him being um, the one who created you. You couldn't come to this earth without God. Hallelujah. In fact, no life comes on this planet without God god's permission it doesn't matter whether or not your, your your father and your mother were getting along it doesn't matter if your 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 mother was raped it does the circumstances as far as god is concerned he has to give permission for you to be on the earth and so he is the father of of all natural life but we see him taking things to the spirit where he becomes the spiritual father of those who are born again through Jesus Christ. We can give God praise for that, my Lord. And so we see through the scriptures that God has always um, dealt with families. In fact, when you read the scriptures, you see endless genealogies. Every genealogy that is listed in the scripture is listed there for a purpose. God deals with family. My God, for example, there was a time after the creation of the earth when the, the thoughts and the imagination of man was evil continually and god looked on the earth and it repented him that he had made man my god because uh, hallelujah there was so much evil on the earth um the, the, there were giants who were cohabiting with men and and and, and uh, angels who were cohabiting with men and and there were giants in the land the evil every thought of man was evil continually but God looked in the earth and he saw one man, my God, and that one man's name was Noah. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And God, God, because just because of Noah, God saved his entire family. My God, can you imagine? God gave this one man a message for the entire world at the time. To warn them for a hundred and odd years that he was going to destroy the earth. They need to repent. And don't you know they laughed at him? My God, don't you know they mocked him? Because at that time they had never seen rain. Because a mist would come out of the earth and water the ground. They had never seen rain. A mist would come up from the, the ground and water the earth. And so they laughed and they mocked. Can you imagine Shem, Ham and Japheth going to school? And, the, and, and, and their parents laughing at them. In other words, your father is building this big old boat. And guess what? God gave every single measure. My God, the measurement. Just as how he has now given Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. He has given him, hallelujah, the command to build an ark called the church. That has specific instructions. And, 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 and don't you know Jesus has through his sons been preaching for over 2,000 years. And he's been saying, hey, it's going to rain. It's not water, but it's fire. My God, the globe who Jesus Christ is preaching to. And as usual, you have men who are mocking. They're saying he's not coming back for since the time of the fathers, ever since the time of the fathers, we have heard and, and we have heard that Jesus is coming. How come he hasn't come yet? 
And so it was with Noah and his family. God chose this one man. And God instinctively put in Noah, hallelujah, the might and the wisdom to build. And I, 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 I can just imagine that maybe there were some people who helped him build it. Just like today, there are many persons who are helping to, to further the work of the Lord, to further the church in terms of the natural things they do. But only if you are in Christ and you are building from a pure heart that your works will be counted. And so in God's time, he allowed two of every unclean animal, two pairs, and, and, and he allowed seven pairs of every seven of every clean animal male and female to come into the ark instinctively and can you imagine these people watching they saw two set of, two pairs of pigs go in they saw seven of the clean animals like the lambs going they saw even the roaches and the ants went in all animals instinctively went in that must have took some time but Noah and his family were saved. And the scripture says God himself shut the door. So we see here God preserving a family. Because of the father who found grace in his eyes. Now we see a little later God, God's, God's heart beat towards families. Moses. My God, God chose Moses. My God, can you imagine? The prophetic word had gone out. And Pharaoh wanted to kill all the male in every um, house. Because he, 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 he got wind that a deliverer was to be born. But look at the wisdom of God. I tell you, God is into family. Because God miraculously preserved Moses by causing Pharaoh's daughter to see this, this baby floating on the Nile. My God, we need to praise God for that. And Moses' sister Miriam was the one who was called to ask for a nurse. And guess what she did? She called the baby's own mother. So God had Pharaoh feeding and providing all the amenities so that Moses would grow up. And the baby's own mother was the one that was feeding Moses. My God, isn't that an awesome miracle? You are trying to kill the deliverer while, you, while God has the deliverer in your own house, being, being breastfed by his own mother. You can't kill God. You can't kill the purposes of God. Hallelujah. Because we would see God repeating that again in the New Testament when, 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 when Herod was trying to kill all the babies because he was an angel of God came by night and spoke to Mary and she, she and Joseph took the child and they fled. But we see God's intent for families. Even... After all of that that, 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 that scene with Moses, I know God was going to do something because Moses had now become the deliverer. Hallelujah. And this Pharaoh, he thought that he could destroy this family, this Hebrew family. Hallelujah. That came out of the lines of Abraham. My God. Because we see, even before we get to Moses, we see where the earth became so crazy. And God looked down in awe of the childies, and he saw one man whose heart was after him. And he called that man Abraham. He says, come Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. And we see where he took Abraham. My God, and we see what, ha what happened. And Isaac came forth, and out of that, the 12 tribes of Israel. My God, God is awesome. But we see God concerned about families because here we are with, 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 with Pharaoh refusing to let God's people go. 
And God said to the fathers, Exodus 12, verse 3, Speak unto all the congregation of Israel. In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of his father. A lamb for a house. A lamb for a family. Because the death angel was going to pass by. The death angel was going to pass by. And they were instructed, every father was instructed to kill a lamb. And put the blood on the doorpost. Exodus 12 verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. My Lord. And so, when that death angel passed through, they would see the blood on the doorpost of every Israelite. And that death angel would not kill the firstborn. But for those who did not have the blood on the doorpost, there was weeping and wailing because the firstborn, including Pharaoh's own firstborn, had died. And all of this was um, prefiguring a type of what God would do in the new creation. Because when we are born again into his spiritual family, he puts the blood on our hearts. His blood is sprinkled upon our hearts and our consciences. And we escape death. We pass from death to life. Hallelujah. So God has always been into families. Natural families and spiritual families. We have to lay this foundation because we now are in Christ and we, have, we, are, we, are, we are in his spiritual families. And there are those who um, would teach that, okay, you are now in the family of Christ. And therefore, it is only your spiritual family that matters. Right? And we see Jesus. Some have used what Jesus said in Matthew 12, verse 48 to 50. To ignore their natural families. But we're going to be looking at this. Jesus is teaching a principle here. Because God now in the new creation has a spiritual household. But he doesn't mean that we are to neglect our natural families. Matthew 12 verse 48 to 50. And Jesus answered and said unto him that told him that his mother and his father was outside. Who is my mother? And who is my brethren, my brothers? And he stretched forth his hands towards his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my father, for whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. He was speaking spiritually here. Jesus was speaking spiritually here because he knew that God established natural families, right? But God also established spiritual families. And he knew that the time would come when those disciples would become a part of his spiritual family. But Jesus did not neglect his mother. Even in his time of death, he prayed one strategic prayer on the cross that included her. Hallelujah. He commended his hands into God's spirit because he knew that not many days hence he would send back his Holy Spirit and his mother would be among those who would be in the upper room to receive the Holy Spirit. And even on the cross, he looked down on his natural mother and he said to John, his apostle, his, his, his disciple who was standing at the foot of the cross. And he, 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 he asked John to take care of his mother. And the Bible says from that day, Joseph had died. Hallelujah, Joseph had died. And we don't really fully know what became of at that time. Because Jesus had brothers. Jude 
and James and sisters. He had natural families. But somehow, while he was in his dark, the dark moment on the cross, he asked John to take his mother home. So God is into families big time. And we are, we, we are looking now at strategic prayers for families. Because let me stop here to say to you that I have proven this over and over and over. I have seen some prayers that God has prayed to my mother and my father for their children. That I have seen God answer those prayers. I have also known of other family um, members who prayed for their families and God answered. And this is now, they're now, there is now a time when God is calling on us, hallelujah, to look at those who are in the household of faith. My God, because we, we are now, those of us who are born again, we are no more strangers and foreigners. But we are fellow citizens, with, fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, according to Ephesians 2 verse 19. But however, let me just stop here to say something. Every single family member that is in your family, and some of them can be off the chain, but God allowed you to be born in the family that you were born in. You didn't come in here by chance. Your mother and your father were chosen by him. Your brothers and your sisters in the natural, you are still a part of family. And if you have the Holy Spirit, God expects you to love them. You know, we went to family week for passion and purity and I heard Pastor Andrew um, minister uh, something from the scriptures that I'd never really seen or look at like before. He went on to talk about um, the prayer that we pray, the, 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 the prayer that we pray concerning um, spiritual warfare. In Ephesians 6, we often go to Ephesians 6, right? And we pray that prayer and we read that scripture. But he spoke to the fact that the context of that scripture about spiritual warfare here and putting on the whole armor of God is in the context of that same scripture. Because how many of you know that the family is where the seedbed of, of, of most wars are? And a lot of war happens in families. Cold wars. My God, physical wars. Every now and then you hear on the news where family members kill each other. But here comes God speaking through Ephes in, in Ephesians 6 verse 1. And, and I'm going to go through that scripture to show you that that is the scripture in which um, Paul admonishes us how to, how to pray strategically through prayer. It starts with children. Obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and your mother this is the first commandment with a promise so here god is dealing with father mother children that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth and then he goes in verse 4 to say fathers do not provoke your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the lord of course he puts in some things about servants there well, the, 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 the main themes of that scripture is dealing with natural families. And then he says, finally, after having done all this, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And hear me well. Many times when we think of spiritual warfare, we think of ourselves attacking the devil head on and cursing him and telling him all sorts of, of things that comes to our minds. But that's not the spiritual warfare that God is calling us to. He is caught the, 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 the armor of God, my God, that we put on is, 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 an, is a, an armor of character, the character of the word. So when we are walking in the word, 
then we are armored and we are positioned strategically to pray all kinds of prayers because it's a breastplate of righteousness listen and we have made spiritual warfare to be what it is not it is it is walking in the word our feet is shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace we are those who walk in peace we have the helmet of salvation that means we are born again hallelujah we have the sword of the spirit that means the word of god is installed in our spirit in such a way that it is the when he looks at us he sees the raw word that we have become and because we have become that word it's a sword of the spirit my god and when we are dressed like that in the home because the home is the battleground the home is the training ground many of us want to go and have a lot of ministry outside of our homes but god says that your home your home come on come on your home he says children are you obeying your parents are you honoring your mother and father because this is the first commandment because when you do this and you walk in the character of the word you are well armored and jude the brother of jesus picks this up and he says that michael the archangel right? we don't have to bring a railing accusation against the devil because one word the lord rebukes you and when you are walking in the character of jesus christ if the devil comes in your way or there are demons in your way god will instruct you how to address how to speak how to your very life sometimes rebuke demons rebuke devils they tremble they cannot stand in the presence of the lord and if you have to cast them out it is with divine instruction so guess what god wants you before you can pray all kinds of prayer to make sure that your armor is on your armor is walking in the character of christ so then we're talking about strategic prayer for families strategic prayers for biological families invoke the presence of god and they involve praying for the well-being and spiritual growth of your family hallelujah this means that you can god has put some parameters at par, parameters in the word he says we can pray for protection from the enemy we can pray that the strongholds be broken we can pray that the holy spirit guide and lead each family member we can pray for unity we can pray for love we can pray for forgiveness we can pray for god's wisdom and guidance to make decisions God's word sets the boundaries for strategic prayers with families. My Lord. So God wants us to understand that it's very important for us to pray for our biological family members. To pray strategically for their well-being and their growth. To pray um, impactful prayers for their lives that they would be a part of the kingdom of God. We need to pray for family members my god and, and 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 we need to pray for the spiritual family of god why do we need to pray because prayer is us co-laboring with god to effect his will in the earth so it is very important to pray for our family members for their salvation and for their spiritual growth there are family members that in my family we have prayed for for years and then God himself, in his wisdom, he sets up a situation, a circumstance, and a relationship. And before you know it, God is using that situation to draw them to him. But many of them, sadly so, it has been in a bed of affliction when they are weak and their back is against the wall. And they can look no further than they can, can't help but look up to God. It has been in those times when they were vulnerable to God that they finally surrendered to him. But nonetheless, we need to pray. Are you watching right now? 
Um, I want for you to begin to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. He wants to save your family members. He wants them to grow spiritually. Sometimes we pray for their salvation and they come in. But what about praying that they get on a ministry track? You know, that was one of the reasons that the Lord allowed us, instructed us to, to form this church. Because um, there are some family members that I know are watching around the globe. And every time they say, I'm watching, I say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he is using even this medium to touch them. Though God wants us to, to also pray. We're talking about praying strategically. For you to pray strategically sometimes, God will allow family members to despitefully use and abuse you. But in Luke 6 verse 28, he says, Pray for them that despitefully use and abuse you, that they may be children of the Father, because he makes his rain to shine on the just and the unjust. So that there is power, the power of forgiveness and love comes to transform lives. So we pray for them that despitefully use and abuse us those kind of prayers when we pray from a pure heart god hears they are abusing us but we are praying for them and god says hey this is a pure heart i'm answering them so are you watching now is there a family member who has used and abused you you have done everything for them that you think that they that 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 God put on your heart to do, or you think that would be needed to mend a relationship, and it gets worse. God says, "Keep praying," because there are some acts of kindness that He's going to instruct you to do to break the power of that stronghold over their lives. I'm speaking to someone right now in your family. You may have to forgive that debt. Just write it off and trust God. Because how many of you know that there are some family members who borrow money from you and they do not intend for you to pay them back? Especially if you're a Christian, they know your forgiving nature and they just leave it, leave it like that because they walk in that offense towards you. They are offended and they are the ones who wronged you first. Sometimes God has said, just let it go. Let it go. And trust me. Hallelujah. So God wants us to pray for them that despitefully use and abuse us. And this is the prayer that you pray. That they may be children of your father. My God. Then there are family members. There, there is a, the strategic prayer of deliverance from oppression and injustice. My God. And you can see the devil having his... His, his heyday in this family member. It could be a family member that you have now who has a mental problem or who is on drugs or who is a kleptomania, who may be in prison. My God, just fall in your face and begin to cry out to the Lord. Stand in the gap for their spiritual breakthrough. Inter intercede for their needs and their challenges. Pastor Andrew spoke about a pastor who was complaining and griping and complaining and griping for years for years for eight years about his son who was just off the chain my god for years and years and then he went to god one day and he said to the lord what about my son and the lord said stop praying stop praying your will stop pray stop grip i'm i'm griping you're double-minded and you're unstable stop praying the problem what did i say concerning the child and he went to god with what god had said concerning his son and within eight weeks his son was off drugs and now he's in ministry with him strategic prayers also involves praying the will of god over your child some of you have of prophetic words that have been prayed over your children some of you god spoke to you concerning that child in your womb some of your fathers god has spoken to you concerning your children begin to pray the will of god over your children i'm challenging everyone right now um wake up 
wake up and hear and see what God is saying to you concerning your children. Write down the things that he has said and bring it back to them. I remember I want to give God thanks for my mother because she had her names written down, all, all seven children's name written down. And sometimes you would go in your, your room and you'd be passing there and you'd hear mother or father calling your name out before the Lord, charting a course in prayer. It's called strategic prayer. Hallelujah. Every son of God needs to be a person of prayer and your family is within the prayers that you pray. We must choose to pray based on our burden and the giftings that God has put inside of us. Some of us right now, you're evangelists, but are you evangelizing as the spirit leads in your family? Some of you are pastors, but does your pastoral burden go towards members of your family, your natural family, and your spiritual families? Some of you right now, you are teachers of the word. But God has been calling you to set up a Bible study for your family. Have you been obedient? What about that brother that you have that is off the chain and it, um, he's always getting in your space? Have you prayed for him? Let me tell you that God wants, hallelujah, God wants all kinds of prayer. He wants us to pray for his will. He wants us to ask God to give us spiritual understanding as to what is happening in their lives. He wants prayers for spiritual growth and maturity. He wants protection, prayers of protection. He wants prayers that deal with our, our hearts when our hearts are bound up in offenses. He wants prayers for, for us to, to chart courses to say, Lord, bring this person into ministry. He wants prayer for us to pray that they, they come into the spirit of revelation and spiritual enlightenment. My Lord, and don't tell me that God cannot save families. Let's look at one example in the New Testament. Acts 16. We're looking at Acts 16. Hallelujah. And let me tell you one of the most important things you can do, mothers. Let me tell you, I am happy for my mother. You see, parents, you may be watching now and you insist on your children going to school five days a week. And those children do not sleep in class. I'm telling you, you have a teacher like me, you do not sleep in class unless you are sick. And you have one Sunday or one Saturday, based on when you go to church, that that child is to get up, get up and sit down in the house of the Lord and hear the word of the Lord. And you have a problem with waking up that child. And you can wake them up to sit up for five days of school from eight to two or eight to three to hear the word of the Lord. And you are, are, are feeling very cute about waking them up for church and insisting that they sit up in the house of the Lord. And then you expect them to find their calling and their career. They will not. Hallelujah. And some of us need to repent today. Because we need to have that testimony. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And those who are, who are rebellious in that house, we're not going to get offended. We are going to pray about it. Children must sit up during church. My mother insisted that we went to Sunday school. And if we were sick, we, it's always understandable. But this thing about taking children to school, um, church now, and they're in and gadgets all throughout the services. You want them to, you don't want them to go to children's church because you don't want them to mingle or teen church, mingle with others. What you want them to sit beside you with an earphone watching cartoons? No. They may not like you now, but later on they will thank you. Thank you, Mama. Thank you for the times you sent us to Sunday school in the morning. 
3 o'clock, we had something called Glean Man. It was youth meeting. Sunday evening service. Service throughout the week. Youth camps, youth conventions. Hallelujah. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any edge to edge it sword. There have been people, um, mothers who allow their children to go to church and they have been in a situation. And that word that they heard in Sunday school began to speak out in their spirit and liberated them. But let's look at Acts 16 verse 25. Because this is the context where Paul and Silas were both in prison. Because when the gospel begins to preach, to be preached, saints will suffer for it. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, that's verse 25, and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was an earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's hands were bands were loose verse 27 and the keepers of the prison awaking out of his sleep the keeper of the prison awaiting waking out of his sleep and seeing the prison's door open he drew out his sword and would have killed himself support supposing that the prisoners had fled so here's the context paul and silas are in prison they were beaten and they were highly they were in prison but instead of crying they sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard them and the earthquake came and the foundations of the prisons were shaken. The doors were open and the prisoners, hallelujah, the prisoners were in danger of, of just running away. And so the keeper of the prison know that, knew that he would lose his life. So he drew a sword and would have killed himself because he thought the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do to thyself no harm, for we are here. In other words, we are the prisoners you are protecting, but we are here. And it brought them out. Hallelujah. For we are here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. That's the, the keeper came out and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And brought them out and said, Sir! What must I do to be saved? My God, these two, these two holy men were, were singing and praising. My God, and the, 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 prisoner, the prison keeper would have killed himself. But Paul and Silas brought him out. And he came out trembling and fell down before them. And, and, and he said, what must I do to be saved? Verse 31, and they said, Paul and Silas said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy household. And he spake unto them, unto him, the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. So this opened the door for Paul and Silas to preach, my God, to this jailer. Isn't God amazing? Hallelujah. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them that same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized. He and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he said, meet before them and rejoice, believing in God with all his house. Can you imagine? The jailer took them in his house. And when it was done, and by the way, he baptized them. Paul and Silas baptized the jailer and all his house. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the surgeon saying, let these men go. And the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. What a miracle. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned being Romans, and have cast us into prison, and now they want to put us out privately? No. But let them come themselves and fetch us out. 
And the servants told these words to the magistrate. And they feared when that they had heard that they were Romans. They should not have done that to them in the first place. And they came and besought them and brought them out and desired them to depart the city. And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. Let me tell you, God saved this jailer and all his house. God is, is in the business of saving people who want to be saved and he wants to save all their house. Do you know that the house of uh, the, the, the church at Philippi was started in a jailer's house? because of the willingness to preach the gospel in a situation that was not necessarily the most popular situation but there are some oppositions to us meeting our family members if you are listening now and there's one family member that you can think of that you have unforgiveness towards in your heart you can your prayers will not be effectual and today is the day you break it some of you need to make a phone call this evening to that family member and say, please forgive me. Today is the day of salvation. My God, say so there's unforgiveness. You won't be able to pray a strategic prayer. Some of us don't know that it is the will of God to save entire families, spiritual blindness. And all it takes is submission to the will of God. Had that jailer not being obedient to the will of God and suppose he had just killed himself. You know what would have happened? If the jailer killed himself, you know what would have happened? That church would not have been formed in that house. He wouldn't be baptized and all the members of his household. Another thing is disobedience. For many of us, God has said for years, giving us instructions concerning our family member. There was a family member recently that God gave me a specific instruction to last week. And he said, this is the instruction to give this family member. And if they obey, they will shift out of the season that they are in. They will move out of that rut they are in. And I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to deliver the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. God wants us to pray for our family members. Pray for our parents. Some of you have parents who are not yet born again. Hallelujah. Begin to pray for them. And with, with your desire to pray for them will come specific instructions as to what exactly God wants you to pray for about them. And when you, your heart is pure, he'll begin to give you a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, a spiritual counsel that when you speak it, they know you may think it's an ordinary word, but it's, it's so empowered from God that it is coming. What about your family devotion? Have you been having them? Hallelujah. If you're a Christian parent and you're driving to work and you have a secular radio station pumping all sorts of, 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 of secular songs and rhythms in your children's spirit while they are on your way to work, shame on you. Change that dial, change that channel. You can have devotions in the car. You can teach the word of God while you drive. If you are on the bus beside your child, you can have a, a, a little devotional where you share the word of the Lord. And out of those times will come strategic prayer. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. You're a single mother. Stop bemoaning the fact that your, your, your child's father or mother is not around. You have the Holy Spirit. And let me just stop right here to teach a part of the mystery of Christ. Because a lot of us, we think that natural families are no, important, no more important. Hallelujah. And therefore, we just revel in the spiritual families that we are in. And you need to know that God put you in a natural family for a reason. But all right, say for me, I grew up in a family I would choose all over again. My father was a pastor before I was born. My mother was a minister before I was born. I grew up with people who would carry me along the way of the word. Hallelujah. 
and birthed in me such an insatiable desire for the word that anywhere I heard the ministers that were teaching the truth around the world, my spirit would gravitate towards them because of the foundation. But suppose you were born in a family where nobody was a Christian and you were even abused. When you become a Christian, you have a new set of genes you are regenerated you become a part of the new creation we don't have time to teach the new creation realities go to the youtube channel and go through the new creation realities to see that in creation you got a new heart a new desire a new family you are put in a, actually a new family and so what if i with all of that advantage and that good start decide to sit down hallelujah and not take advantage of my spiritual um, training. Because the scripture said, train up a child in the way that they should grow. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. So what God will do is he will put you leaders in members life, in your life. You may not have a parent who, who was um, on a right track. But you would put youth leaders in your life to ensure that you are sitting down under the word of God and that you are accountable. God will do that. So because he's your spiritual father, there's really no advantage, no disadvantage in the sense that he is the great equalizer. So he will even give you more grace. And that is why I have seen pastor's children who take the word of God for granted and take their parents for granted and don't learn. And I have seen children come from parents who are not Christians and they are the only one in their space and God aligned them to a youth leader who is diligent who sees to it that they are seated in the house of the Lord that they are taking notes honey what did you learn today and who carry them along the trail of the word and they grow up and find their gifting in Christ and they are far more in more in tune with the things of God and growing even more than pastors children because God covers every base you will not have the advantage of saying you cannot pray for your family you can't live holy because your parents were not Christians that's how God fixes it and so I want to challenge you today hear the word of the Lord we want you and your house to be saved. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want, we're going to be praying right now. Hallelujah. We're praying for those family members in prison, those in the hospitals, those in mental health challenges, those who are not saved, those who are backslidden. Those who are walking contrary to the will of God. We are praying for family members who have learning challenges. May your may the compassion of the Lord go out to you today concerning your family members. I want you to start typing names all over in the chat. Initials all over. Whatever platforms. Begin to type initials and names all over. Hallelujah. I want for you to even get down on your knees and begin to ask God to forgive you. For the, the indifference. I've found Jesus now and it's okay. No, that's not how the way it goes. In my father's family, one Sunday, nobody was a Christian. And one, a born again Christian, one day he walked into a Sunday school class at 19 years old. And he heard the gospel and surrendered his life to the Lord. And ever since that, his prayer would be, God save my family. Hallelujah. Even before his passing, he would say to us, pray for my brothers that they be saved. My God. And in our family meetings, we call the names of our family members before the Lord. Fall on your face right now. Family members, some of you are watching. You are not saved. Right now, I want you to begin to cry out to God and ask him to forgive you of your sins. Wash you in your, his blood to save you. My God. Fathers, you have not been an example to your sons. And one of the reasons why so many boys and girls are out of the chain is because daddy and mommy, you were supposed to be gatekeepers in your house. In other words, when the devil came in, you would have installed so much love and righteousness in your children's lives so you wouldn't find any doorway. But you have left your children, you have left your children to be raised 
to the devil by the devil through to shows and and, and 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 social media i'm telling you the devil is evangelizing our family members especially the young ones by putting the the the, the, the lies in the, in in the the, 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 the me, social media and the shows and the cartoons but let me tell you rise up rise up because rise up hallelujah rise up parents rise up brothers and sisters rise up my god the context of of ephesians 6 um children obey your parents in the lord hallelujah honor your mother and your fathers fathers provoke not your children to anger hallelujah the context of that scripture in verse 10 it goes on to say finally my brethren be strong in the lord your home is your training ground for ministry your home is the battleground where god wants you to put on the armor which is the character of christ and walk in his word so you can pray all kinds of prayers my god we want we are praying that that right now that, that that you begin to tune in to the word of god because you're wondering what you need you're spending thousands of dollars taking your children to therapy my god and might tell you if you especially if you bring them to christians who are not um to counselors who are not christians by the time you're through your battleground just got harder but get on your knees and begin to call on God and ask him to give you a passion, hallelujah, to raise your children up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. The word of God can do it. The sword of prayer, hallelujah, can do it in the name of Jesus. My God, for those who are recommitting and those who are coming to God right now, I'm praying with you right now before I pray for family members. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you that you put me in the right family. You chose my mother and father for me. For the reason, God, you chose the mother and father that I, uh, that you saw that would be fitted to take me into the world. My God and Lord, I thank you that even though they did not fulfill the right, the obligations, but you sent others in my life. And for those who their parents did, fulfill the, the obligation lord i pray you forgive me for slighting my mother's counsel for slighting my father's counsel for slighting my aunties and my uncle's counsel and in the name of jesus lord i pray you forgive me of my sins come into my heart fill me with your holy spirit and send those who will disciple me in the name of jesus lord i lift up all my family members to you right now i pray for your blood covering mighty god in the name of jesus i pray that you will fill me with the knowledge of your will with all spiritual understanding in jesus name now lift up your hands where you are i'm going to be praying for families in general father in the name of jesus we thank you for strategic prayer, um, prayers that are being prayed right now we pray concerning the spiritual well-being and growth of family members lord we pray for their salvation we pray, oh God, that you will close the gap, um, that the enemy, closing the gap, that the enemy would creep through, Lord Jesus. We pray that you'll raise them up into ministry to find their giftings and their callings. We pray, oh God, that you forgive those who despitefully use and abuse us. We pray, God, that you will transform their lives. My God, we pray for spiritual breakthroughs. We pray for those who are mentally challenged. That God, you would give them their right minds to serve you. Remember those who are in prison. Send your word, Lord. Remember those who are sick right now, Lord. We pray for healing. Remember those who are burdened. Lord, lift the load in the name of Jesus. We pray for the raising up of more apostolic prophetic churches who will send truth into nurture families. And Lord, you just like you gave this jailer household salvation. We pray for a multiplication of household salvations across the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray and we give you thanks. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We are continuing on strategic prayer. And who you and do you know that those prayers that were prayed a while ago were strategic? And if you agreed from a pure heart, God will hear you. We invite you to join us 
for the next two series that are coming up the next two weeks as we continue on the series of strategic prayer because god is calling us to come boldly to the throne of grace where we we'll find grace um hallelujah we find mercy and we find grace to help in times of need this is the eternal church of jesus christ the record